Let's look at a couple of problems from chapter 18 real quick um, about sampling from normal versus non-normal populations. So in 21, a sample is chosen randomly from a population that it can be described by a normal model. So let's say this is actually the, um, the model, the population that we're sampling from. So this is a model that accurately describes the entire population, the real variability in the, present in the entire population. Okay, And let's assume that it's normal. So what's the sampling distribution model for the sample mean if we've got if we chose a sample? Now they're purposely not putting any numbers in here, okay? Um, but the main thing is that there's a special case of the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that the sampling distribution model for the sample mean becomes more and more normal as the sample size increases. But the special case is if the population already was accurately modeled by a normal, then the thing is just plain normal to start with, okay? It just gets more, it gets even more accurately normal. But if it's really close to normal to begin with, it's just going to be normal um, to, to afterwards, okay? So um, the sample mean is going to have a, the same kind of distribution, still normal. The only thing is that the variability is going to be decreased because when you, when you pool together a bunch of data in a sample and take the average, you decrease variability. Well, what do we expect for the center? The center, I've put this one so it's centered at 5. If that's the mean of the population, we definitely expect the mean of the sample to also be equal to 5. The variability, the spread, is going to be decreased. Okay, So the only thing that changes is that the um, standard deviation, Okay, and so that's going to be um, of the sampling distribution, is reduced compared to the sigma that we had up, up there by a factor of uh, root n, where n is the sample size. And that's really the only difference. So a very special case of the central limit theorem, but, but one that, that can happen. It B, if we choose a larger sample, what's the effect on the sampling distribution model? All that happens is it gets pointier and pointier, it gets sharper. So that the um, all of the, it's essentially the histogram of this model gets concentrated near, near and near 5. And that's what happens. Larger sample sizes we expect closer and closer to the mean. Okay, less and less variability. So this is going to be useful, for example, in problem 25, um, where they assume that you actually have an accurate normal model for the real deal, the population, everything that can happen. And they're asking about sampling that. Okay. Now 22. Um, is a contrast. A sample is chosen randomly from a population that was strongly skewed to the left. Okay, here's something that's pretty strongly skewed to the left. Okay, um, here's the, the mean is probably somewhere in here, somewhere near three or four, and um, well, somewhere between two and four. It's a little hard to tell from the picture, and but it's it's skewed way to the left. Okay, so describe the sampling distribution model for the sample mean if the sample size is small. Okay, well if the sample size is small not it's not fully in the central limit theorem case okay but we know that it's on its way there that um, if we increase the sample size uh, a bit then we would get more and more more and more close to a normal distribution so should be about halfway between this model and normal it's a little hard to imagine but I'm gonna have pictures in a second okay if I'll put halfway in quotes, some part of the way, depending on exactly how small the sample size is. If we make the sample larger, what happens to the sampling distribution model, the shape, center, and spread? Okay. Well, the shape becomes more normal. Okay. And what happens to the center? The center should stay the same. Because remember, the sampling distribution for the mean, whether we pick one at a time, or two at a time, or ten at a time, or a hundred at a time, the, that, the mean of that, the average of all the averages, should be um, the average of the original distribution. So that's the one thing that should stay the same. The center in the sense of the mean, not in the sense of median or any other um, measure of center, but the mean should stay the same. It's part of the CLT. And the spread decreases, again, by that factor of root n. Okay, Spread as measured by standard deviation. Again, that's the measure of spread that works here. That's why these measures of center and spread are so useful because of this theorem or, and similar theorems. OK, so I've got some pictures here. This is what the original distribution looks like. And this one here 
is when you average, uh, when sample size two, here's the sample size eight, uh, uh, four, and here's the sample size eight. Notice that the variability is getting decreased and it's getting more symmetrical. If I just gave you this and said glance at it for a second, you probably couldn't tell it too easily from a normal model. If you compare it to a normal, it still is has a leftward skew. They're always going to have slight leftward skew, even with fairly large sample size. But that sample that skew is going to get much much reduced as the sample size increases. Um, and so notice it. This actually tells us that the original mean was actually three, as it turns out. It's hard to tell from a skewed distribution where the mean is. When we sample it and get it to focus down and make it more symmetrical, it's showing us that the original mean was actually equal to three. Um, now, as we make the sample larger, what happens to the expected distribution of the data in the sample? This is a big distinction. They're not asking us about the sampling distribution of the mean anymore. They're actually saying, what's the expected distribution of the data in the sample? So if we take this population up here, suppose we took a really big sample size. Suppose we took like 10,000 samples from this distribution. And we didn't just look at the mean, that one number extracted out of it. We actually built a histogram of all the numbers in the sample. It's a lot more information. The central limit theorem does not apply to that. And if the sample size is big, what we should get is a distribution, a histogram, that actually looks pretty close to this one if the sample size is quite large. If the sample size is small, then it's just going to look very maybe vaguely like this one. But notice this really subtle thing, the expected distribution of this data in the sample. They're not saying take the sample and just extract the mean and then do it over and over again for many samples. That's the sampling distribution of the mean, OK? Sampling distribution of all of That's what they're asking about in A and B. Here, this starts to look more like the original model and not like a normal. Big distinction.